Hello, bookish babes, and welcome to my book nook. I realize now I never explained what the winter wing prompts were or anything, so I'm editing that as well in my video while I have time before kids show up in my room. So, winter wing. There was five different prompts, I believe. One was read a book in the dark, and I just read all of them at different points in the dark. And then one was read one with thrill that gives you thrills and chills. That's what's going to be Shiver by Allie Reynolds. And one was uh, one with snow on the cover, and so that was No Exit by Taylor Adams, although I'm not going to lie, I didn't really make that one. But Near the Bone also has snow on the cover, which that one's for read one in a winter setting. So read one in a winter setting was Near the Bone. And then one was read a novella, and that's Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire. So I still hit all of them, even though I didn't read No Exit, as you'll find out in this vlog. But now that you know what winter mean is about and all of the prompts, now let's go to the vlog. Hello friends, editing Rainy here, because I always forget to create intros for these videos. So here's your intro. We are in Winterween. So by the time you are watching this, Winterween ended on Sunday and it is Wednesday, so it's a couple of days after the fact. But I'm going to be doing this vlog sharing um, what I was reading for Winterween, which is hosted by Gabby Reads and Olivia, Olivia Reads a Latte. I'll link their channels down below. Now basically, they it's a time to read spooky books in a non-spooky season, so for winter. And so I'm going to tell you what books I am reading within this vlog or what I was going to attempt to read, and then you can watch and see what unfolds. So in this vlog, you will see me reading uh, Near the Bone by Christina Henry, uh, Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and McGuire, and Shiver by Allie Reynolds. And then I was going to try No Exit by Taylor Adams, but you'll see what happens there with that one. All right. Let's let you go watch Winterween vlog. Here's our reading sprint. Woohoo! About to finish the first round, 21% mark. Hello, friends. So, I just started my Winterween reading sprints. We are doing Winterween reading sprints on Patreon because I'm a patron of Gabby and uh, Olivia Reads a Latte. And so, we're doing a reading sprint, and I just did the first one for 45 minutes, and I got to the 21% mark of Near the Bone. And holy crap, this book is so good. Like, the whole premise is about a girl who lives in the mountains with, like, her abusive husband. And how there's this giant creature that's, like, bigger than a bear out in the woods. And then a couple of humans come to track the bear. And she has to stop the humans from before William sees them. Because terrible things happen when William is angry. And holy crap. So much has gone on. There's been an interaction with the creature already. I just hate this husband so much and think he's a complete a-hole. And I hope that she has a plan for, like, getting rid of him. It is so good. I cannot wait to keep reading. Hey, guys. So it's officially day one of Winterween. So if you know, um, yesterday I did start Near the Bone by Christina Henry, which I'm actually kind of annotating it a little. I'm dipping my toe into the annotating world. We'll see what I think of after this. But... I am about 50% into Near the Bone now. I read about 20% yesterday. I've read about 30 more percent today. And it is so good. Like, we just got to an interesting twist in the story. I'm just all about wondering, like, what this creature in the woods is and what's going to happen with, like, her husband. Like, it's very much keeping me on the edge of my seat. I am really enjoying reading it. It's definitely chilling and haunting. And I feel bad for, like, the main character, the main girl, um what's her name Maddie yeah so it's getting quite good I can't wait to see it and then I'm supposed to have listened to Every Heart of Doorway by Shauna McGuire today but I just didn't get to that and I don't know when I'm gonna get to that although I ultimately should probably start also reading Shiver because this one is super long and I don't have the audiobook for this and so if I want to finish it by the end of this week then I need to get to it because it's at least 400 pages long um but this one sounds really fun so this one says a reunion weekend in the French Alps turns deadly as five friends discover that someone has stranded them at their remote mountain resort during a snowstorm. So this sounds super fun. I'm start excited. I love the cover. It says it started as a reunion and ended with a murder. So this is definitely giving me thrills and chills vibes. Uh, but yeah, my goal tonight is probably to, I don't know, does it bother you when people read more than one book at once? Because it doesn't bother me. Like that doesn't bother me at all. Um, but I'm probably going to start Shiver, maybe get to like the 10, 15% mark tonight. And, um, yeah, and then I'll update you at some point. 
I forgot to show you my nice winter ween sweater. So it says winter ween 2022. Uh, yeah, I always like getting merch, especially like crew decks or hoodies, because you can wear those like multiple times. And so I really much like it. But yeah, I've got my audio. I got my headpiece in, even though I don't know why, because I just said there's no audiobook to shiver that I have in my possession. I could get it on Audible, but I don't want to pay for Audible. And I've already used my free trial. I'm probably just going to read it physically. I mean, I'm having to read this physically right now because I don't have an audiobook available for this either. Like, this was on hold for, like, six weeks. Like, why are people reading the same book as me right now in my, in my town? Why? I know why, because it's a winter read, but come on, friends. Be a little original. I'm not going to be, but you can be. Hello, friends. It's January 5th. We haven't talked since the third. The last update you saw was me reading Near the Bone. I need to get a lot better at, like, vlogging and all the things I've discovered. I just don't always want to go pick up the camera. You know? You know. Anyway, I finished Near the Bone. Uh, not that night. I finished it last night. And I loved it. It was a five-star it was fabulous. I'm so glad Winterween is starting off well. So yeah, I just thought it was really haunting and chilling the entire time. I just couldn't. So I don't know if I explained what it's about already. If I did, then you're getting this twice. But it was about our girl named Maddie. And she has a very abusive husband. And she lives in a cabin at the top of like the woods in this mountain. And it's like snowing and all of that stuff. And there's this creature in the woods that has like sharp claws and like gleaming golden eyes and like murders like animals and like takes all their or murders animals and things. I'm not going to explain more than that. But it murders animals and stuff. Anyway, her husband, like, thinks he's going to go kill the creature. That's whatever. But then these three other random strangers or hikers come up to also hunt the creature. And she has to save those men and not let her husband know that they're up there before he, like, hurts them or something. Because the whole thing at the end of the dust jacket says, because bad things happen when William is angry and William is her husband. Anyway. Uh, it was haunting the entire time. It kept me hooked the entire time. I was just wondering, like, what's going to happen? What is this creature? I'm, I was still, I was wondering, like, what is this creature exactly? Um, are we going to get to know what it is? Is it going to attack one of them? Is she going to become friends with these hikers people? Is her husband going to kill them? Is she going to kill her husband? Which I was really hoping that she would. It just had a lot of stuff like that. And it was just a phenomenal read. I loved how it ended. I loved, like, the stuff that you get to find out about her past and how she ended up with this guy. It's just an amazing read. I highly recommend it. It was definitely scary, and I read it at night sometimes. I loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. So I finished my first book of Weekend Ween. I am planning on finishing the four books that I have chosen for myself. So one is down, and I still have five days to go. Now let's talk about the next book that I started last night and I read a little bit this morning. I'm about 38% of the way through according to Goodreads is Every Heart a Doorway by Sean and McGuire. This is the first book in the Wayward, Ch Wayward Children series which I kind of went into this a little blind. I didn't really know a lot about this book and this book is quite interesting and I'm still not really sure what's happening in it but I'm intrigued by like what's going on in the sense if that makes any sense. So what this says is that children have always disappeared under the right conditions, slipping through the shadows under a bed or at the back of a wardrobe, tumbling down rabbit holes and into old wells and emerging somewhere else. But magical lands have little need for used up miracle children. Nancy tumbled once, but now she's back. The things she's experienced, they change a person. The children under Miss West's care understand all too well, and each of them is seeking a way back to their own fantasy world. But Nancy's arrival makes a change at the home. There's a darkness just around each color corner, and when tragedy strikes, it's up to Nancy and her newfound schoolmates to get to the heart of things, no matter the cost. So I don't feel like that really explained it, but I'm not really unsure what's going on. I know that there's, like, different worlds that, like, these children have gone to. Like, they leave their homes and go through these portals to, like, new worlds, and then they get kicked out of these worlds and sent to this home for wayward children where, like, they're, they basically are learned learn how to like move on and go back to their old lives but they're all wanting to go back to the portal worlds but like I don't really know I don't really know what's going on but we're following our main girl Nancy and she just got to the home for wayward children ran by Eleanor West and she's met her roommate and she's just kind of acclimating and getting oriented and all of that and so I don't really know how far we're going to get into the story in book one because I think there's like eight books in this series but I'm really loving it. This is my short story novella because it's only 178 pages. But I am quite captivated by the story. And a lot of people have given this five stars or the whole series five stars. So I'm excited to continue with it. But yeah, I'm excited to see where this one goes. 
Hopefully I finish this today and then I can start Shiver by Allie Reynolds tonight, which we will talk about when I actually get to that one. So off to read. Hello friends. Okay, let's first talk about Every Heart a Doorway because that's the second book that I finished for Winterween today. And then we're going to talk about my very terrible night that's happening on a lovely Wednesday night. So I finished Every Heart a Doorway and I gave it five stars. So I've had two five star reads for Winterween so far. It was great. Um, I really, really loved it. So I kind of understand what's going on in it now. So it's about these kids that like have found secret portals to like other worlds and all of the worlds resemble like fairy tales like Hades and Persephone's, um, just different ones, Jack and Jill, things like that. And they go to these magical worlds and then they end up getting kicked out and sent back to their homes at some point. And their families don't believe them. So they send them to like Eleanor West's uh, School for Wayward Children, which is where you get sent if you like are trying to get back to like your fantasy world or whatever and she helps you like move on from it since like she says you'll never probably find your your door again to get into that same portal and this one girl named nancy goes and then all these people start like dying and stuff at the school and so like she has to help band together with the other kids to like stop these murders from happening to these wayward children and it was really good i loved all of the characters and i loved the setup that they gave for each one because like each book is going to follow a different character and like their journey and story and so this was just like the groundwork for it and i really loved it it was fantastical it was magical it was just a great time. So I'm really glad that I chose that as my novella for Winter Ween. I very much loved it. Oh my gosh, I almost dropped it. Five star. I'm excited for book number two, which follows our characters Jack and Jill from this one, which was a pivotal part of this book. So super excited. So that's one good thing that's come out of tonight. As for the other one, so I, as you know, I got a MacBook Pro for Christmas and my external hard drive was formatted for uh, PC, but I didn't think anything of it because it would plug into my Mac was fine and it would let me like take stuff off of it. However, I've learned recently, it won't let me delete anything off the drive and it won't let me uh, add anything to the drive because it's not formatted to Mac. But in order to format it to Mac, I have to erase it and wipe it clean. But I was like, oh, I have tons of stuff on there that I can't have deleted. So I tried to put it onto a folder on my computer, but I don't have enough room. So I'm having to move stuff to Google Drive and I'm having to like move stuff to my phone. It's taking a million years and this is what my life has turned into. We're on like hour two and I'm still not done. And you may be saying, why don't you delete this stuff? Because it won't let me delete it from the drive. So I have to put it somewhere else before I can sort it, which I'm going to make time to sort over the next couple of days. So it's just like annoying that I have to take it somewhere else before I'm going to have to delete it. And it's ruined my whole night and it sucks and I hate it. But that's where we're at. So hopefully I'm done with that soon. And then I can get a little bit of reading in. The next book I'm picking up is Shiver by Allie Reynolds. Oh, so I'm reading that for my Thrills and Chills one. The only thing that sucks is I don't have an audiobook for that because it's on hold in the library. And then my library didn't even have an audiobook for No Exit. Like, what? They didn't have an audiobook for this. So the last two books, I don't have audio, which means I have to read them physically, which is going to be tough. But I have four days left of the Winter Ween. I think I can do it. This one's, I think, I think No Exit is how many pages? All right, it's about 340, and then Shiver is about 400. So got some work to do friends hello friends my camera's like having a really hard time tracking things right now so if i'm out of focus i'm sorry it's the next day and i have read to the 30 percent mark in shiver by ali reynolds which is getting really good i also am excited because i ordered a couple of books from pango books which if you've never heard of pango maybe one day they'll sponsor me uh basically it's like an ebay for selling books like book buyers can upload their pictures and sell stuff and i needed um, so Booked and Busy is doing a non-book club read kind of thing where they're going to read duologies every two months. And the first one that they're reading is by N.K. Jemison, which I've been really interested in reading by her. I've never read anything by her. And so I got book one of the Dream Blood series called The Killing Moon. And I got it on Pango Books for like eight bucks, which was awesome. So I'm super excited to read this this month. But I have like 15, 16 books I got to read because I have a secret blog that needs to come up. And I haven't read that yet. I'm just trying to get through Winter Wayne as we know. But my plan is to finish Shiver tonight or tomorrow and then I have three days left of Winter Ween and then I will finish No Exit and then I'm just going to finish Winter Ween early and get to work probably on my secret vlog next because I'm really excited for that one and then I got to get to like my TBR. We are just getting so busy. 
yeah, I gotta go. I'm gonna go put this away. I'm gonna go do some dishes real quick. Then I'm gonna go get me and my son some food. We got ourselves tacos at Tijuana Flats because that's his favorite place to eat. And then I'm gonna go do circus class. Not today, but tomorrow. And I'll probably put a clip in it here of that. But I hear my son crying, which means I got a dip. So, update, it's day six of Winterween. I think I talked to you yesterday. If I didn't, I don't know. But I finished my third book for Winterween. I finished Shiver by Allie Reynolds this morning. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if I've really talked about this one in this vlog. I don't think I have yet, so I'll give you the rundown. Basically, there's like a group of friends. Well, they're not friends at first. They're all professional snowboarders and they're in like this snowboarding competition and they become friends like within it and whatnot. And there's like six of them and then one of them goes missing during the competition and they can't find them and so like 10 years go by they still haven't found her they presume her to be dead and then 10 years later uh one of them invites all of them back to the same resort where the competition was for like a reunion but then you find out very quickly that that someone actually someone uh invited them not for a reunion it's to like murder them and get revenge on the person so it could be the person it could be and one of them you don't know but it started with reunion and ends with murder and it was really good uh so I really liked it I think they had a lot of snowboarding stuff in here that I was kind of confused by like I didn't really understand like all these moves and things that they were talking about so I did have to actually look up some of these things because I wanted to know like what a 720 was and what a crippler was and like things like that but I think it still did a really good job it definitely made you feel like you were in the place with them and I like this because the book goes it switches every other chapter between present day, like what's going on at their reunion and 10 years ago back during the competition. And of course, it'll go back to like matching up to where they are now. But it basically shows you like all of them within the competition and how they interacted with one another and stuff. So you could start to get in your mind who you think might have set them up. And then you just kept going from there. And I really liked it. Although I thought the main character was annoying as all heck. Mila, she was annoying. And I thought the uh, girl that was murdered was kind of a bitch. So I don't know. But um, anyway, I gave it four stars. It was good. I did predict who act who I did predict who invited them there, uh, which of the six friends. So I definitely figured that out. But I did not figure out like all the other stuff. Like there was a lot of twists that I just did not see coming. Uh, so yeah, it was really good. I would definitely recommend it. It's your typical thriller about a couple of friends, a reunion, like murder happens, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I really liked it. And I will definitely read more by this author. And I'm glad that I finished it because now I can join in on my friend's book club discussion at the end of the month. And all things are good in the world. So we've read Near the Bone, which was a five star read, Every Hearted Doorway, which was a five star read, and then Shiver, which was a four star read. And then I need to start No Exit like tonight. Because I gotta finish it by tomorrow because winter wanes over tomorrow. And No Exit I'm sure it'll be fine. And we already talked about what that was about. Before we move on, I want to show you all the fun books that I've gotten in a book haul recently. Either from books that I've bought or books that I bought with a gift card that I got the other day. It's not a lot of books. It's like eight or nine books. Uh, but yeah, let's show you the books I got. Okay, it's more than I thought. But you know what? Don't judge, okay? I have... I have 14 books to share with you. So I'm going to be super quick in this book haul <laughs> because I just figured this would be fun to add in this vlog. So I finally bought Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass because I really wanted it and it was on sale at Target and I need to read it soon so that I'm ready for a house, the House of Sky and Breath, which comes out in February. So I need to get crack a -lacking. And then I picked up Winter People by Jennifer McMahon only because Gabby reads like is obsessed with it and loves it. And so I figured I'd try it. And then this finally came in the mail. I ordered this for Christmas and it got here the other day. And it's Bunny by Mona Awad. I got this because Katie Colson and a couple other uh, 
people that I follow on YouTube have talked a lot about this book. Like Sid Bookworm uh, also had this as one of her top books of the year. So stoked for that. Finally got an Agatha Christie novel. I got the first Hercule Poirot, Poirot, I don't know how you say his name, mystery uh, called The Mysterious Affair at Styles. And I'm super excited to finally read an Agatha Christie novel. I picked up King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair, who's the author of A Touch of Darkness, just because I kept seeing this on book Instagram and book talk and it looked fun and it's a vampire romance. So you got to love it. And then this one is controversial because a lot of people either love it or they say that it's torture porn. And that is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara, which I love that name. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm kind of scared to read this. Like, am I going to love it? Am I going to think that this is just a person that loves to write really sad things about really sad people? I don't know, friends. I don't know. And then I got The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. Also because uh, Gabby Reed said that it was a great cute little read. I believe this is a gay romance novel about two guys that work on a reality dating show or something like that. It sounds cute. And then I got How to Feel at Flirting by Denise Williams, which I've seen this around on booktube a couple of times and it was on sale at the thrift store. So I figured why not get it? I've heard that it's a really great romance, but it's also really deep and like goes over really dark discussion. So like don't just go into this like willy nilly. And then I got Layla by Colleen Hoover, which is her latest thriller. So like Verity and Layla, I believe are her thriller novels. I'm super stoked because I also got Verity for Christmas. I picked up They Never Learn For Themselves Myself by Lane Fargo for Christmas because none of my family bought it and I really wanted it so I finally got it. This one is an English professor that murders men that she thinks deserve it or something like that and I've also heard it has a sapphic romance in this. I'm stoked. And then the last two that or last no and then the last two that I got is When We Left Cuba by Chanel Clayton. This is the sequel to one of the books that I am reading due to my January TBR next year in Havana. And I got book two, so I'm super stoked. I think there's four books in this series, so I'm going to just keep looking for them whenever I go to the thrift store. And then we're going to finish with one that I'm really excited that I found. And it is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. Meg with books is obsessed with this series. And I rented it out from the library but didn't read it in time before January began. And so now I don't have to worry about it because I own it. But yeah, that's my little mini book haul. I'm super excited to have these books. And now I'm going to go take a shower, get ready for bed, and then film some other YouTube videos. So I will check back in with you tomorrow with an update on No Exit. I just took a shower we told you that and I think we're just friends enough that we can do this and I can talk with a towel on my head and if we're not friends enough for that then sorry <laughs> but I forgot to mention three friends that are on three books that are on their way that I'm super excited about one is the third book in the uh Stalking Jack the Ripper series so I have Stalking Jack the Ripper I have Hunting Prince Dracula and then the next one is Escaping Houdini I believe the last one I have to get is Capturing the Devil but I got all of these on Pango Books which is like this thrift bookstore app but uh I don't have they don't have the fourth one on there so I'm waiting for that and then I also have the Once in Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow on its way to me I've seen four people put that on their best books of the year for 2021 and so I just needed to have it plus I really love witchy books like and so I bought another witchy book which is called The Nature of Witches I believe The Nature of Witches or the yeah The Future no it's The Nature of Witches and that one was because uh Books and Lala loved it and two other people but like I told you I'm on a witchy kick and I'm planning on reading those in October uh for like witchy time. So I'm going to read that one, The One from Future Witches. I'm also going to read Payback's a Witch because I didn't get to that in time. I already read The X-Hex last year 
didn't love it. And then there's this other one that I was going to read. Yeah, I have a whole witchy thing like planned for that. But anyway, I'm going to go brush my hair and things. And then I'll see you later. Hello, friends. We are going to have a come to Jesus moment about the last book of Winterween. So today was the last day of Winterween. And I should have been reading No Exit by Taylor Adams. And instead I was reading Daisy Jones and the Six. Why? You're going to think this is really petty. And honestly, this is a princess problem. I didn't want to read it because it was a mass market paperback. Why is that a big deal? I don't know. But I was completely unmotivated to read it. As in like literally every time I sat to open the book, I was like, I don't want to read this. And then I was just whizzing through Daisy Jones and the Six. Maybe also because Daisy Jones and the Six is just like an easier book to whiz through. And I'm just really have been wanting to read it for so long. But I also don't have an audiobook for No Exit, which I think that would have really helped me push through. And the fact that I had to just physically read it is like... So I came on here to say, I've read, I'm reading Daisy Jones and the Six. I read Near the Bone, Shiver, and Every Heart of Doorway for this log. I will not be reading No Exit in time for Winter Ween. I don't feel that bad about it. I'm going to read No Exit at some point. I'm probably going to get it from Book of the Month and get it as a giant hardcover. And then I'm going to return the mass market paperback to my mom because I borrowed it from my mom. And I've just discovered, like, mass market paperback is not my thing. And it's okay. We'll survive. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But this is where this vlog is going to end. So I hope you enjoyed it. I feel like it was a fun ride for me. And I'm going to move on to other things. Because if you look at my TBR cart, I still have a lot there that needs to be read. And the night is young. So I'm going to read a little bit more of Daisy Jones. And I'll touch in with you guys later. Bye.